Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and today I wanted to give you five examples of decks that I think may see play in some variation of the deck list. Of course, these are lists I was kind of playing around with a little bit, they're unrefined, and likely if there was a real version of the deck, they'd probably be played, uh, uh refined a lot more, of course. So, first off, I was thinking, hey, uh, Shaman got Maelstrom Portal, and Shaman as a class has had actually a lot of spells that are pretty dang solid in the mid to early game already like plenty of aoe removal hex one of the best removal in the game because uh, um, it goes straight through death rattles like sylvanas and healing wave which actually works quite well when you have a very high mana curve in your minion count so this may be more on the more uh out there ideas but a barns based shaman deck might not be that unreasonable so, the Blood Mage Thanos being there, of course, just for uh, the spells, considered throwing in something like Spirit Claws, but maybe not. Uh, it seems kind of iffy, right? Because you have to play a lot of spell damage minions. So, beyond having pretty much every board clear in the game that you can grab as a Shaman, Elemental Destructions, uh, Lightning Storm, now Maelstrom Portal, not playing uh, Forked Lightning, of course, though that's not unreasonable it might actually be worth considering maybe one forked lightning over one elemental destruction and uh, then a bunch of removal spells that bring you into the mid game with some hammers uh, for summoning a minion without putting an extra five drop in the deck and barns if you can get them out probably the most valuable card in the deck and would be the most valuable card in decks that are similar like this in other classes you could do the same thing probably with paladin but you have so much synergy here with uh, high-end mana cost cards. For instance, I'll just go down the list with all these minions. Halazil the Ascended. Um, if you happen to play Barnes, you get Halazil, and you still have mana left over. So you've spent four mana, and you have a Halazil on the field. You could, on turn seven, Lightning Storm and gain a ton of health back. Or you could play Barnes, and then basically Elemental Destruction, kind of like as a second Halazeal, if you do run into that situation, and then your real Halazeals further on in the deck for an extra heal later on. You could get Emperor Thorazan, which in a high mana cost deck is usually going to be good, because you get the danger is your hand would get flooded with stuff like Ragnaros, Maligos, or Yasarge, and that wouldn't be really good, so uh, you want to Reduce that cost as much as possible. So, play Barnes, and you get an Emperor Tharzan proc on turn 4. That could be a really big deal. Uh, basically, bringing all of this uh, high-end stuff into more of a mid-game state. Hogger, I think, is actually pretty good with Barnes as well. Because Hogger, at the end of your turn, is going to summon a 2-2 Null with Taunt. So, Barnes uh, gets you 4-5 of regular stats. And then also a 2-2 Taunt on the top of that. Which would make Barnes, uh, like what, a... Uh, let's see, a four... S no, okay, four stats plus two is six. So a six, seven, effectively, spread across three minions. That's pretty damn good for four mana. Uh, not to mention the taunt protects Hawker as well, so that could be relevant. Maybe they need to actually use a removal spell on a 1-1. One, one. That would be pretty funny. Uh, Sylvanas Windrunner, the obvious synergy with bar Barnes. What could be nicer than getting a one mana mind control on your opponent's minions? Given, uh, probably just going to sit there on the turn it comes out, but maybe not. Maybe you do get to steal something nice with it and there's nothing your opponent can do about it. Alakir uh, would be a 1-1 one, one with Wind Fury Charge, Divine Shield, and Taunt. Uh, if you do play it with Rockbiter Weapon, um, that could be a turn 5, deal 8 damage to a minion for basically 5 mana and 2 cards. Pretty sweet. Ragnaros the Fire Lord, of course, uh, comes out as a 1-1, deals 8 damage to a minion, and then gets taken out by your opponent's anything the next turn. Maligos, uh, 4 mana to get 5 spell damage on the board. Um, now, this deck isn't really built around like burst damage to your opponent, though you definitely could play it kind of like that. Um, but it could turn your Lightning Storm from a 2-3 to three damage into a 7-8 to eight damage, which is a huge difference. So basically clearing anything your opponent has for 7 mana. And I think the ultimate dream is you get your Sars Rage Unbound out for free, uh, because that'll be a 1-1 one, one that basically summons one of these huge cost cards onto the field for free. So it could be 4 mana, summon a 1-1 one, one that summons Ragnaros, the real version, and then you, just stupid value off of that, right? Now, um, obviously there are weaknesses in this deck. The reason uh, Bog Champion as a deck kind of works is because the taunts prevent aggro from just rolling over the shaman. So 
it may require something like more taunts in order to be a real deck, but I think there's a lot of hilarious potential here. It's a lot like playing a uh, Astro Communion Druid, and you definitely could play a Barnes version of Astro Communion Druid, having even more ways to get your ridiculous high-end cards out, like your Sarge. I think your Sarge is the dream off of a Barnes, a Barnes, no matter what deck you're playing. So, really sweet card. So, next up, um, kind of like a Karazhan themed pirate thief rogue deck okay that was a terrible description but the idea here is that you're playing more of a early game tempo rogue something like what a previous attempt at pirate rogue would have been but pirate rogue never really worked but maybe it could work a little bit better now uh, it's important to note that swashburglar is actually a 1-1 pirate um, and that gets you a free card off of your opponent's class burgle of course free cards well not free cards but Basically draw two out of your opponent's class. And then Undercity Hack Huckster, same type of deal there. Uh, you combine those cards and you may get to the point where you have enough cards where reducing them with Ethereal Peddler means you can get huge tempo swings by playing this card. So it would kind of become like the uh, linchpin of this kind of deck. And you could definitely play it without Pirates, of course. But I feel like if you're going to be playing Ethereal Peddler, you want to be playing a tempo-based game. Because reducing the cards of cost in your hand is only really relevant if you're going to be playing proactively rather than reactively. Well, usually. Um, so if you reduce that Tyrion you stole from the Paladin from 8 to 6, then your turn 6 becomes ridiculous. But if you just hold on to the Tyrion because you're afraid of removal, then it's less good. It's just kind of like, well, it was good enough to just steal the Tyrion to begin with. And if you play it on turn 8 anyway, not really relevant. So I was figuring uh, South Sea Squid Face, not too bad uh, for dealing extra damage. Maybe an Assassin's Blade kind of belongs in a pirate deck these days. Um, and you definitely can play cards like South Sea Deckhand, Blood Sail Raider, Dredge Corsair. Kind of the standard fare for the better pirates out there. Um, and one thing to note is that Shady Dealer still exists, which if you're playing a pirate deck, basically becomes a 3-mana 5-4. Pretty tough to deal with. Um, now, of course, once again, this deck list would need to be re uh, kind of refined a bit more, but I think the idea is not too bad in and of itself. It would definitely be interesting to see a rogue deck get played that doesn't revolve around a uh, Gadget Sand Auctioneer. It might just turn out the Gadget Sand Auctioneer is still uh, king by far, but we will see. Okay, now this deck list, maybe more than anything, is kind of to show how ridiculous the idea of a Menagerie Magician Zubot Curator is. Uh, zoo warlock or zoo anything kind of place that would be um yeah these cards zubot and menagerie magician theoretically you can get six six stats and ten ten stats and that's what you would make as the case for this deck even being remotely a thing uh having the curator as a late game draw engine is really nice i mean zoo eventually runs out of cards so getting extra cards could be pretty nice there um especially if you're playing all three tribes simultaneously so what I was kind of thinking here is kind of just grab some of the best from each of them. I think that's really the only way you can really play Zubat and Menagerie Magician. Um, and just kind of find what synergizes while holding on to some of the best cards from Zoo, like uh, Flame Imp, Abusive Sergeant. Uh, let's see here. Um, Dark Peddler, of course. And Power Overwhelming. You really can't play Zoo without that. And then beyond that, your uh, your tribal cards like the beasts and the uh, the murlocs, they just kind of fill in the gaps for where uh, a previous mainstream zoo deck would have had. Uh, basically just trying to fill similar purposes. Like flooding the board, for instance, instead of playing... Uh, what What's that card called even? The Zero Mana Flood the Board card. Forbidden Ritual. Instead of playing Forbidden Ritual, you play um, Token Spawning Murlocs. Instead of... Uh, let's see here. Well, instead of like generic 2-3 drops, you just throw in whatever beasts or dragons you can kind of come up with, which are arguably decent. Um, but in reality, yeah, you're taking a hit on the overall value of your minions because you're not playing the optimal minions. Maybe you would probably want Imp Gang Boss in this deck, come to think about it. Murloc War Leader is good with your Murlocs there. And I think Hungry Crab might actually be a tech choice at in this set. 
you can always destroy your 1-1 one, one to gain two, uh, an extra 1 sat. So you get a 3-4 crab by destroying a 1-1, one, one, and that's not too bad. But um, a lot of people are going to be playing Curator. So if you Hungry Crab, they're like Cold Light, uh, or Corrupted Seer, which is a 6 mana 2-3 Murloc. That's actually not bad. That could be decent value, depending on uh, the matchups that go uh, exist going forward in the set. But really, it all comes down to is Zubat and Menagerie Magician good enough to make it a thing? <sighs> I mean, it's a lot of theoretical value, but so is uh, that 1-1 one, one drop. So is Veliquary Seeker. That's like 5-5 five, five for 1 mana. Reliquary Seeker, I think, in the end, turned out to not really be a thing, right? I mean, I haven't seen it any time recently. So, if Reliquary Seeker isn't good enough, is Zubat and Menagerie Magician going to be good enough? Maybe not. Uh, you could still argue for a Curator Zoo deck. I mean, a Curator anything deck. Uh, Zoo kind of tends to play a bunch of random stuff, so maybe you throw in a couple Murlocs, a couple Beasts. Your Beast would probably be Direwolf Alpha, and then uh, Dragons could be... I mean, Hungry Dragon isn't too bad because B uh, Zoo is always trading for the board anyway, so um, getting a more m mid-sized minion could be good. Uh, yeah, just going through some ideas here with this deck. I don't think this deck list specifically will be a thing, but it's fun to experiment with anyway. Now, next up, uh, Paladin. I was kind of split between three paladin decks i really wanted to try a barnes paladin deck which i probably will still try but i mean we already did barnes shaman so that's kind of redundant um secrets paladin which is kind of what i'm thinking of here uh considering if it could have a comeback without avenge for instance and without cards like uh, muster for battle which are highly relevant and shield of mini bot as well and then the third type would be Dragon Paladin, but everybody pretty much knows what Dragon Paladin is going to look like. You're going to put Dragon Synergy cards in it, and you're going to try to outvalue your opponent with dragons. Woo. Very interesting, right? Um, now, for a Secrets Paladin, and really any early tempo deck, I think, going forward, Arcane Anomaly seems like a really good one drop from the set. Whenever you cast a spell, give this minion uh, plus one health. You could almost consider uh, putting Divine Strength in a deck like that. And maybe you play an uh, Arcane Anomaly, Divine Strength. Uh, what would that make it? A 3-4 uh, for 2 mana on turn 2. So you turn 1, you just play it. Turn 2, you make it a 3-4. That's pretty damn good. That's really good. <laughs> uh, so anyway. Um, yeah, because Secrets are 1-drop spells, you're probably going to be playing a lot of them out of the hand anyway. So if you make this a 2-2 two -two or... Ideally, like a 2-3 could be one drop that gets to trade up with two drops. Maybe even uh, kill a two drop and then still remain on the board. So I think this is a solid card. Uh, aside from that, grabbing the value cards that can kind of pull you into that mid game where you play the secrets. Uh, the um, Mysterious Challenger, like Abusive Sergeant, Argent Squire. I think that was a decent. Um, as far as the secrets go... I don't really know which would be the best secrets. Uh, I think it would be fun to try a sacred trial, though. I mean, the opponent probably wouldn't expect it, and sometimes it can be good. Uh, but yeah, throw in whatever secrets you want. Kind of move into that mid-game. I think with this deck list, you're only expecting to get one Mysterious Challenger, and then that's your big tempo swing, and then uh, really, you're not really relying on drawing the second one, but sometimes that would happen, and you basically play it as a 6-6. Six -six. I mean, it really depends on how many secrets you want to stuff in your deck. Um, cards like Selfless Hero, Argent Protector, Loot Order seem decent. Loot Order to get a little bit of extra draw in case you don't get the Divine Favor. But, but yeah, basically, uh, Secrets Paladin. Now, why would I even mention Secrets Paladin for the Karazhan set? I think the reason for that is Avian Watcher. If you control a secret, gain plus one, plus one, and taunt. A five mana, four, seven taunt is pretty freaking good. So... To make those early game secrets suck less, you have that secret on the field, and then you get to play a 4-7 uh, taunt on the back of that. It's almost good enough to make secrets uh, pretty decent without the Mysterious Challengers. So I think having two of those in the deck and two Mysterious Challengers followed by a Tyrion Forging wouldn't be too bad. Um, maybe it would still not be like a tier 1 deck if you fixed the deck list and made it more competitive. But I think the idea is worth trying, at least. I mean, Avian Watcher is a real beast. Ironically, it's not a beast, but it's a beast of a card. Okay, so uh, last deck I kind of went through and came up with that I want to share right now for today. Um, 
a resurrect priest. So cares on resurrect priest. The idea here is that priest just gets walked over whenever it tries to play overly greedy with double and tomb and shit like that. So trying to fight for early board control, trying to actually maintain tempo from the early game and not let opponents overwhelm them. Um, it's kind of the idea here. And then how you would win the mid game is with burst from holy champion or by resurrecting some of your four and five drop minions for pretty good value. So onyx bishop, you get a three, four, and then maybe you get a priest of the feast or holy champion back. Uh, maybe you resurrect and you get a injured blade master back at full health. You'll notice I also put injured caval deer in the deck. I think this might be a card that's a little bit underplayed. Um, it does synergize decently with Priest. Maybe you, you turn one play it and then you turn two hero power to make it two three. But um, yeah, it's not too bad with Resurrect. And it's not too bad as a one drop that can you know help stabilize your board earlier on. Then of course you still got the Circle of Healing, Akanai Soul Priest combo for board removal. A Holy Nova also for the same reason. And a lot of heals actually exist in this deck for holy champions so priest of the feast that's a heal flash heal that's a heal circle of healing that's a heal um and one thing to note is that when you do have holy champion and priest of the feast and play at the same time whenever you play flash heal that's two heals that's going to trigger which means your holy champion gets plus four attack and i think with that you'd be able to win some games by just bursting the crap out of people in the same way a frothing berserker would so this may actually be a thing. And of course, having the Arcane Anomaly in there, as I mentioned in the other sets, if you're going to be playing a lot of early game spells, like, for instance, Powerwood Shield, and this becomes a 2-4 on turn 2, or you could make it a 2-4 on turn 1 even. A, a, minion, a one drop minion that can gain extra health like that is pretty good. I, I really think it's good. It's, it's Shadowwood Pain, your opponent's minion. Can't scale out of control, and that's saying a lot for a one drop, so... These cards may actually be able to help you hold your own as a priest, and then you just play like a mid-range deck. Who knows? Uh, could be a thing. I know in general, priest kind of got screwed this set, as far as we know, and that's Onyx Bishop and Priest of the Feast are actually just super amazing in practice, and nobody knows it. Um, but yeah, kind of making the uh, the best of a set that didn't really give priest like a light bomb power card or anything like that. Anyway, on. Probably going to be pretty exciting. There's plenty of random decks to try. This is just five examples from me. So uh, I've been Dark Skeleton. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at these decks for fun. Um, I don't know if any of them are going to be competitive. I'm not a super competitive player. But maybe this gives you some idea of what you can do with your own decks. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you in my future videos.